Uh, thank you so much for everything you guys do. My question is a church I attend is spiritually sound and they follow Acts 29. I guess it's a network of churches uh, on the church finder. Mm -hmm. Pastor King from John MacArthur Seminary, their, we their website suggested it. Uh, what would be your advice for that? So I guess the question is Acts 29 and all their problems that have been presented. Um, should she stay? Should she leave? Is it okay that they're affiliated with them? Uh, that's the question. I guess my, my question would be how close is the affiliation is, are there leaders of the Acts 29 network or emergent church movement or any of that, that, that are having an influence there in the church? Are they in the leadership? Um, have the, those who have been part of the Acts 29 network in the past, have they still adopted some of that theology and, and embrace that? Or are they moving away from it? Uh, the fact that that's a MacArthur uh, pastor speaks, I think, highly of him, um, but that doesn't necessarily reflect upon the entire church, nor does the nor does the fact that they have at one time been associated with an Acts 29 network necessarily mean that they've embraced everything that was part and parcel of that movement some years ago when it kind of branched off of the, um, was that Mark Driscoll's ministry that that yeah. kind of was part of? He was, uh -huh. he was involved in some way with yeah, that. Yeah, he was the head of it for a yeah, while. Yeah, so... You know, then the question is, what what is the ties there? If you're seeing emergent church affiliations and false doctrines, then that's something that you should be very concerned with. But if you're getting sound doctrine, expository teaching, a biblical philosophy of ministry and biblical church leadership structure and discipleship, then the fact that they were at one time associated with the Acts 29 network, I don't think is necessarily a problem worth leaving over. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, generally speaking, the Acts 29 network um the distinctive there 29 is implying that there's, you know, we're still writing the book of acts in a sense because there's only 28 chapters in acts. So we're continuing the book of acts. And so they would be charismatic uh, in their, in their theology that as a network. Now that having been said, I am aware of at least a couple of acts 29 churches who are cessationists yeah. despite their affiliation with the acts 29 network. So um, yeah, I agree with Jim. I wouldn't, I wouldn't head for the hills just solely on the fact that they're um, in that network. Um, now, for me, if if it's a if it is a, a, a charismatic church, which I, I kind of doubt if it's coming from a, a master seminary graduate, it's possible, mm -hmm. but I, not likely. Um, but if I could not be a part of a church that's charismatic, um, that's too important of an issue for me. But I don't know. Yeah. And, and I would like to add um, that some of these churches uh, are just on the network so people can find them. Yeah. Because a lot of people that I know that are trying to find churches, they get on every website that they can. Because uh, at one point in time, there weren't a lot of church searches uh, available on a website. You know, now we have the G3 conference. Now we have founders. Mm -hmm. Now we have so many other ways to find churches. But maybe five, 10 years ago, when people yeah. were trying to find churches, yeah. a church would love to be on X29 because everybody was going there to find a church. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't totally cut. I would yeah. maybe talk to your pastor, yeah. uh, find out why he affiliates with them and, and, and dig a little deeper. 